basically CGI means computer generated imagery um, and it's so important for seconds from disaster because we have to recreate big dramatic disasters which we don't have archive for so um, whether it be a plane crash or a boat sinking or a volcano going off often there is an archive covering that and we want to as dramatically and as excitingly show that event unfolding um, unpacking that event and um, really CGI is the only uh, the only solution to that it starts with a model, so you might start with the model of your plane, which is your plane that's going to crash. Um, so all of the geometry, all of the sort of um, all of the proportions of the plane need to be accurate. The first thing that is given to the director by the 3D, the CGI supplier, which is Red Vision for Seconds from Disaster, um, is, a, is a block out, we call it, which is a pre-visualization, which is a really simple, um, basic rendering of that scene. Um, with that, the director can then start cutting with that. They can make decisions with regards to the timing of that shot, the choreography, the camera move, all of the animation and, and the duration, all of those decisions you, you know, you, you'd make when you were shooting a, a traditional live action shot. It literally is like a 3D version of a film set. And I think the director feels really liberated being able to sit there beside the animator and saying, right, I, you know, let, uh, what does it look like top down? Is it clear? Or maybe if we hide behind the plane and then pull the camera out and all of those decisions, you know, they absolutely love playing around. It's, it's kind of like Boys With Toys, really, you know, and, and Spielberg with his miniature set is now just, it's all done in a computer, really. In a similar way, you know, uh, aesthetically for a photorealistic plane crashing through the ice, which is what was required for Potomac, the Washington air, air disaster. Um, it was really useful to be able to see, well, okay, well, what does it look like if we travel under the water and see the ice breaking as the plane comes towards us? But maybe let's swing the camera up to see how it looks below. And all those kind of great decisions that a, a director would usually make with their cameraman on a location, you know, where best to stick the camera. All of that still applies. There are no limits within reason as to where you can stick your 3D camera if your, uh, if your environment is virtual. And it's only when the, the shot is finally approved and we know exactly how long it needs to be, exactly what the plane is going to be doing in the shot, say, um, that we can then go to that final render stage and, uh, and, and HD it takes a long time it takes you know it takes days to render these shots often because there's so much information every pixel is a different shadow and and so that final stage of rendering takes you to that photorealistic kind of quality What we're trying to do now is have more handheld shots and, 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 and degrade them and make them fit a lot more kind of that grammar of documentary, I suppose, where you kind of really feel like, wow, this is a sort of thundering moment that's actually happening that's been grabbed by somebody who's there at that moment. Uh, the Seconds from Disaster episode that features the Munich hostage crisis is a really good example of this. Um, uh, there, we really needed a POV looking through the fence. When I say POV, I mean point of view, so as if the camera is in the position of that person viewing the scene. It felt very much like a, a genuine shot, you know, but it was a shot that was never captured, so we're giving an audience the coup, you know, almost, the, or National Geographic could have the coup of being able to provide a shot that nobody's ever seen. It's never been captured before. What Crystal Vision allows you to do is, is unpack the science. It, it's, it's a kind of it's a, a transparent render which allows you to see inside the plane or inside the engine. So you can see the nuts and bolts of how the engine fell off or why the plane crashed. It allows you to see inside a gun so you can see why it jammed. All that lovely kind of x-ray vision, I suppose, is what Crystal Vision works so well at. It's also great for something like Munich where um, you needed a very clear arena to be able to see exactly where people were. And it's a very clean, very kind of glass-like render. I really hope that people watching Seconds from Disaster, it's on the National Geographic channel, um, I really hope that they come away absolutely convinced by the photorealistic shots. It's really enhanced their experience of uh, a truly terrible, dramatic event unfolding in front of your very eyes.